What's up, Moto Buddies? Mike here from Taco Moto Co. and Baja Taco Tours. Let's do a shootout on fuel pumps. These are the fuel pumps that are readily available with fitments for the KTM, Gas Gas, Husaberg, and Husqvarna half liter dirt bikes. So these are like the 125 all the way up to 570 fuel injected bikes. The most common fitments for these are like the the KTM TPI two-stroke fuel injected bikes, uh, the 350, 450, 500 KTM bikes, Husky 501, uh, and everything in between. Any of the injected bikes, the Austrian injected bikes, with the exception of the new generation 22.5 factory edition plus and up, so that'd be 22 and a half and. 23 KTM Husky gas gas motocross bikes the ones that have uh, adapted the new style fuel tank where the fuel outlet is under the seat as opposed to on the left hand side lower wing and we'll show you a couple of snaps of the fitment of the different tanks and the different fuel pumps so these this is the ubiquitous fuel pump these bikes have been around since 2011 we're going to do in-depth, exploded investigation of each pump, uh, what the attributes are, what the advantages and disadvantages of the design elements of each one, and then we'll wrap up with our new release, Takamoto Fuel Pump, and why we think that this one has the best engineering and best construction of any of the available pumps up to this point, why we're calling it the 3,000-hour the fuel pump, and why we think uh, the average service life of some of these pumps may be as low as 100 hours. Uh, typical average service life is going to be in the 200 to 300 hour range for stock and then why we call ours the 3000 hour pump. Let's begin down here in this range. So these three pumps right here are all made uh, basically as far as we can tell through casting marks, investigation, using magnifying glass, looking at the injection molding marks and the casting marks of the components, all made in the same assembly line. So these come from whoever the OE manufacturer is for these three particular pumps. Everything about them is identical with the exception of the color of the casing and the top cap. So there's, they each have individualized themselves with a different color top cap, but as far as everything else internally, all the components are identical and exactly the same. And so whether you buy any one of these, they, you're getting the exact same pump, regardless of which color it came, which manufacturer, which distributor you got them from. Some of the attributes of these pumps that make them all unique, or I guess make them all the same, or unique to each other, I guess. Maybe before we do that, let's talk about how a fuel pump works. For this demonstration, we have the stock fuel pump, and so in the center here, you have the armature. This is the the rotating. This is the only rotating or moving part of the pump, um, and this is the drive motor, and then you have the impeller wheel down here. So this assembly is what spins. Everything else is stationary. Down here at the bottom, you have the pump assembly itself. This is the heart, obviously, of the unit, and you have this little impeller, which uh, might be hard to see, but there are these little curved impeller blades. So this is just like uh, in a hydroelectric dam. You have the little water cups and the, the force of the water moving past them create the turn. Well, in this instance, we have the force of the motor creating the turn and these little cups, each one of these little blades is cupped like so. And as, as it sweeps through, it grabs a small cup full of fuel and then and then puts it under pressure. And this would be, uh, let me describe it like this. So this is the inlet. This is inside of the tank, inside of the plastic assembly, the carrier. And there's a fuel filter, a screen sock that goes on the bottom of this. And so the draw of the fuel is pulled up through this little small cavity right there. This chamber houses the impeller itself, like we just described. And so this thing spins and so the fuel is drawn in here and you can see this little chamfer right here this little groove it is largest at its largest opening here and then it it bevels down and becomes smaller as it gets here to the area of the outlet port which is right here so it's putting the it's putting the liquid 
under compression as it sweeps it through and pressurizes it and then the fuel is exhausted or this is the outlet port side it's pushed out there and so this sandwiches like that the motor itself has this little keyway this little slotted bevel here on the armature and then that fits in and so now we're turning the uh, the compressor there and so this unit you remember we've got our in fuel and our outlet fuel and so the fuel under pressure comes out and it sweeps its way up through the armature assembly right here and this this is all encased in the body of the motor itself you have magnets that sit there on the inside and here on this one you can see the magnets they're retained there's two magnets they have some 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 of these have glue some of them not uh, but the magnets these curved magnets sit here inside of this cavity you have a little retaining spring and that just puts pressure on them to hold them to the outside of that cavity right there so this is all contained inside of the body that's the body there so the fuel under pressure is drawn up it's pressed rather under pressure up through the seal so this is all sealed tight this whole entire assembly is liquid tight and so there's no leaks and then it's drawn up pushed up and then the outlet cap is here this is the stock one and this is broken off but you can see the outlet there that's where fuel goes up and out the top of the motor fits in here those are the brushes it assembles like this and then fuel under pressure is pushed out just like that that's a completely sealed unit and then at the top of the outlet port is a Schrader valve so that's just a backflow preventer check valve so that once you have fuel under pressure that's presented to the hoses and the fuel filter and the rest of the system when you turn the bike off then that is not pressed backwards it's not back rushed through the filter itself it's retained and so the fuel system can be held under pressure for quick restarting and that pressure will typically last for generally about 24 hours it'll retain within plus or minus 5 to 10 psi of fuel there will be some leak down and eventually this will bleed itself back down to zero psi and so if your bike <clears throat> has been sitting for any number of days you might have to prime the fuel pump once or twice to get it to to fire off um, but if you do a quick restart within an hour half an hour a couple hours then the bike should fire off immediately and you don't need to reprime if you do have a bike that needs to be reprimed or is hard slow starting sometimes it might be that the schrader valve is not retaining pressure and it's bleeding back and leaking off that could be one of the one of the things in the diagnostic and we'll go through later on we'll do another video where we completely break down all of the failure points and troubleshooting points on a fuel system and what the symptoms would be and what the causes would be and at the bottom i just noticed here there's no this is um encased in a bushing so this this rotates on a bushing right here and then the bottom of the armature uh, it has some of these have different different ways of doing it but there's a little bit of a point and that point rides on this little steel pin right there and so that is the simple mechanism that's how that fuel pump operates so coming back to these three again this is our category where these are all exactly the same pump uh, just like on the stock one you have an impeller and the um, something to note all of these pumps I think they all use same material and they don't use the same supplier they are all not exactly the same but the physical characteristics and attributes of each one of them regardless are all very very similar and so we've never seen a pump fail with an impeller we've never seen impeller issues never seen impellers come apart break or fail in any way um, I should say that over the last couple of years two years or so Whenever I have seen, often when I've seen somebody in some of the posts or threads say that they have a fuel pump issue, I've sent them a call tag and then had them mail me their pump, their failed pump, regardless of brand. And I've amassed a graveyard of different pumps trying to really understand what are the failure points of these? Are there any common failure points? And what are they and how when we designed our pump, we could work around those design issues. Um, and so in, it never once did we see any issues or problems with the impellers. Uh, and then you have the, 
the, the assembly, this is just the body of the, the pump cavity itself we talked about. And so the only real difference here you've seen between, we'll see between pumps, is whether or not they have these little raised edges here on the bottom, we'll get more into that later. If this inlet port is angled to promote uh, the, the fuel um, flow, and then the anodizing, the hard anodizing finish, and then the metal surface finish of these two faces. And on these three pumps, the anodizing is uh, very scratchable. It's not that hard. The surface itself is not very smooth. You can see uh, the camera may not be picking this up, but there's just little imperfections and you can feel them a little bit with your fingernail. So the refinement of the metal itself is not, not particularly great. There's, there's not too many design elements that are involved in these components. These are pretty straightforward. One thing to point out, you see there's a little hole here. See that light coming through? This is just a little air bleed off. So if your pump cavitates as you're building pressure in here, this little outlet port is designed to push out any air bubbles that might have been in there. There is a little bit of hydraulic loss as well. Some fluid fuel will come out of that. And so you're bleeding off a little bit of the overall pump pressure itself, but because of the high RPMs and the high capacity of the impeller, and uh, it, it's not significant. In fact, it's all designed in. This is, this is a designed loss, but that's essentially just a bleed off, pushing out any air that would otherwise cavitate in there. So these three are all the same, and like, like we described, uh, pretty average surface, and then as far as the hand, hard anodizing, not not super impressive but adequate and then when you move up into and and we have never seen any failures here with these components themselves with the exception of high degrees of wear on these surfaces because this hard anodizing wears off pretty quickly and so as that impeller this impeller will dance itself up and down this thing as it lives here in this little cavity it you, you can't hear that but it it floats, there's clearances. It's, it's not, it can't be sandwiched 100% fill within the top and the bottom. There is a small gap. And so this impeller here will just sort of dance up and down as it's, as it's operating within that touching and it will touch both of these surfaces. And so these lower grade pumps or entry grade pumps, they will have a high degree of wear inside of this cavity. And so as this pump ages, fuel pressure will decrease. So when it's new, it starts out, it's probably pushing somewhere around 100 PSI uh, raw outlet pressure, which all of these are capable of doing. But these will, the, the, the pressure curve will drop off most aggressively with these three pumps because of the metallurgy and then the, hard, the lack of uh, harder anodizing on that. And, and then this will also wear just a little bit. So that's one of the things that happens with these pumps in this category. The other thing when you are dealing with uh, these types of, of or grade of pumps is the weight of the armature. And so the heavier the armature, the more rotating mass, reciprocating mass, which is what you want in a pump, in a pump motor. And these are the lightest. They have the least amount of material. These are 44 grams. And then the, the other thing to point out is that it's copper. It's just a raw copper, copper to carbon for the brushes. And the raw copper in the presence of ethanol inside of the gas tank itself will create pitting and corrosion. And so you have an aggressive wear of the brushes. The brushes will, will wear faster on a raw copper top motor in the presence of ethanol. Now, if you only ran, if you had this pump and you only ran ethanol free, say a race fuel or just an ethanol free sourced fuel, then that would eliminate that as a failure item. But all of us, most of us, are typically using all types of fuel and also pump gas. And some of that pump gas is going to be ethanol infused. And so that will decrease service life. So the service life of this pump is affected by raw copper top. Uh, the brushes on these are adequate. All of the brushes have been adequate. We, we, it's been rare that we've seen pumps fail because of brush brushes, brush length, or, or any of the attributes of the brushes. We have seen one or two where, and I've got, I've got one that we took apart. I forget which one it is, and maybe we'll 
discover it here in a second. Maybe it was this one. Yeah, it was this one. So how the brushes are attached is up here at the top, you can see the, the terminals. So each terminal pokes through the upper cap and then that's where the wires, the connection wires are. And so this, this terminal lug here has a copper braid, or not a copper braid, but a braid that connects the brush, the terminal itself, through this little little um, woven connector wire, and then it will connect directly to the brush itself. And you can see how that works. And all electric motors, uh, brushed electric motors, operate on the exact same principle. The, the architecture might be different, but the fundamental is the same. And then you can see the fuel is pushed out through this, that's the outlet port right there. So also these, where the, where the terminals exit the body of this, there's a little bit of fuel that will leak, just these are not sealed, but a little bit of pressurized fuel will leak past these. And again, it's, that's designed in, that's a, that's a calibrated amount of loss that's known and understood, so it's not, a, it's not a problem. So that's what's happening with the brush assembly. So we've never really seen issues with the brush, except on the very rare, maybe only once, or twice have I seen it where the crimp of the braid, the, the, the wire braid here to the terminal had an issue. And I wasn't exactly sure if it was just a failure of the crimp or maybe there was a short somehow within it and it burned off. But I think I remember one or two, but again, very, very rare. That's not a very common failure point. Brushes, not very common. Uh, the Schrader valve, those are somewhat common to present an issue and essentially just it's leak back. And so you, you, don't, you don't maintain that system pressure. You get some, some bleed off and so your, your bike will just maybe need to be primed once or twice before it fully starts. But that won't leave you stranded. It will just be a little bit of an annoyance with having it starting. This could fail in the closed position and block off fuel. And I don't know that I've ever troubleshot one to that degree to see if that was ever a cause, but in theory, that could be a failure point. And then the last thing I guess you have is the contact between the top of the armature and then the plastic body itself. There's the hole right there. And so that acts as like an upper carrier. The load is down here on the bottom where the impeller is. And that's why down on the bottom, there is a bushing. And that's a bronze bushing, just a standard wear bushing. And on these, on these three pumps, this is the smallest bushing. So, and I have seen where this bushing will wear and then the pump begins, the bottom of the armature begins to rock back and forth. And then in some instances, we've seen the sides of the armature contact the magnet and there's wear on the armature and the magnet as this is danced around inside there. We've also seen where there's very accelerated wear between the, the surfaces, the two surfaces of the pump and then the impeller. And then all of that extra friction just puts load on the pump and then it it creates some uneven wear of the brushes and can cause the brushes to wear out failures here at the top with the with the pitting of the copper so all of those those wear dynamics are things that have generally caused pumps to fail and these three pumps these pumps will have the shortest service life because of those attributes that small bushing and, and the other things that we talked about and these are typically though the cheapest as well so these as far as price point goes, these are typically the cheapest pumps. And then they're, they have those design attributes that we talked about and they will have the shortest service life. If somebody had one of these three pumps in their bike, I would rate this at about a hundred hour pump. I think I would safely say that I would run, that would be my runtime, my trusted runtime. Now in any of these estimates that I give, there are gonna be people in the comments who are gonna say, well, I have one of those and it's gone three or four times that long which is great, but we've also seen people have these fail under that. So whenever you have an average, that infers that there, there are uh, scenarios where the real uh, runtime will be less and more. So I'm just giving you what I believe based on the design attributes and then the, the methods and materials to be what our comfort level would be for running one of these pumps. Okay, next up you have two sort of in the middle category and this uh, one here on the left is uh, Best Dual Sports and it's the version two. So over the years they have come out with two different pumps. They were sort of like their first initial Gen 1. This is the one that's currently available, the most recent one. And then over here on the right side is the California Cycle Works. 
these are similar and different than the other group and so some of the ways that these are an improvement over those is they have a heavier armature and so in the in the other group the other three they had 44 grams versus 48 grams here on these the impellers are the same again they all seem to be the same the finishing on the interior surfaces the anodizing the hard anodizing on these is better and so this is smoother it's it's so almost but not quite like a mirror smooth finish but you can just see with your eye that it's a it's a better finish it's more refined and then the scratch resistant of this is better than the others the also some of these this one in particular does a good job of having a beveled outlet port so that encourages an easier exit easier transition of the fuel out of that so that would be a little improvement over the others also of note these have a larger bushing and so that's an improvement and then in this group also you have like we talked about we have the heavier armature everything else though is the same with one exception um, so far all the all of these four have a round area where the contact for the top of the armature and then the pump body itself is is around here you have one that's more of a hexagonal has these points and so there would be less friction that's happening on these and so ones that have that are designed to have a little higher rpm and that's what's going on with california cycle works so improvements we do have improvements over the other grouping we though still do have copper so we're ca carbon to copper and so all those same issues apply that we just talked about with the other ones but these would be a, a middle grade better and then still some design deficiencies these are probably going to be i would rate these at about 100 100 to 100 to 150 hours somewhere in that category maybe up to 200 hours service life and probably the number one th uh, thing that will deteriorate the most on these is the copper top here with the ethanol fuels that would be uh, what would drive down the service life or hold it down uh, but these are an improvement and so if you're going to and these are, might be a little bit more money. And so if you're looking at anything in this category, I would pick one of these two over the, the bottom three. If you're trying to stay within a certain price point, that's where I would make that choice. Looking now at the stock pump, this is the benchmark. This is really where all the other pumps probably took their original design concept from. This is the one that was done, designed by the OE manufacturer to fit into the pump housing itself. And so, the attributes of this one is every uh, everything about this is what the other ones were trying to trying to hit the impeller itself uh, again all the same the exact same design there's really no difference or improvements that that are have been made between any of these pumps on the impeller itself when we get to the pump assembly now you have really high grade very strong very durable hard anodizing these are all aluminum hard anodizing on this and you can see that it's cast they didn't hard anodize the outer edge. There's no need, the, the outside of it on either surface. It's just here in the wear areas. So they have the hard anodizing here where the bottom of the pump outer shell itself contacts. And there wouldn't be any vibration in there, but this is, this is where it needs to be uh, liquid tight. And so they have hard anodized that surface. And then it is, uh, it's almost like a mirror finish. It's a mirror you can see how shiny it is. I think this pump has some hours on it. Yeah, it's got some wear. I don't know. You can see the wear here of where the impeller has contacted that. This would be a pretty low hour pump. So this, this pump failed uh, with low hours. I don't remember. Oh, I do. Uh, this pump failed because the top broke off. Uh, otherwise, this pump ran just fine. And so it didn't have a whole lot of hours on it. And so there's just a nice little wear in area, which is common. And you see that with uh, relatively low hours so the outlet pressure of this pump would have been well within original range but because this is such a nice hard anodizing there'll be a lot lot longer service life of this area of the pump itself and then now here you get into a design differentiation between the others this is a significantly bigger armature this is 52 grams versus 44 on those other ones and then the most important design element is that it's carbon on the top and so you have carbon brushes against carbon top and this is an all fuel pump this will safely run with no degradation in any fuel any race fuel 
any ethanol fuel you could run all the way up to 100% ethanol on this pump motor so this will not be affected by that whatsoever and uh, these pumps again are the benchmark for everyone as far as the the design the same thing holds true that we talked about before the bottom of the armature is curved just a little bit and it contacts the bottom steel plate here and that's just to stop as the pump the pump will just sort of walk up and down within the body itself but the brushes this brushes are spring loaded and so they're holding they're holding the armature down against this bottom plate and it's rotating down there. And then the pump itself, I forgot to mention, is lubricated and cooled by the fuel running through the center of the pump. So that's, that's what's happening with the stock pump. And the service life of a stock pump is as low. Now I've been in Baja on the beach. We brought spare pumps, we always bring spare pumps. And I've changed stock OEM pumps at 30 hours. And then I have guys who in comments will say that they have stock pumps going on seven, 800 hours. So the service life of a stock pump will vary dramatically. We in practical service and in my observations, I would give a stock pump of a service life anywhere from 250 to maybe 350 hours at the very top end. All of these pumps uh, need to be treated as a maintenance item, a wear and tear item. And even though there are those, like I said, those outliers, those guys who are getting five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred hours, that happens. Uh, what, what happens more often though, are these things fail and leave somebody stranded. And we are, again, we're seeing, and I, my recommendation on a stock pump is between two and 300 hours. If you're above 300 hours, you're totally on borrowed time. You could take it up to 800. You might be that lucky guy. Uh, but on any of our bikes with stock pumps that we're running stock pumps, we will yank them anywhere uh, in that 200 to 300 hour window. The final pump to discuss here is the Takomoto in-house pump. This is one that we've spent years now developing and working on refining and perfecting. And, and we finally released this not too long ago. And the advantage of our pump is we've been able to do the failure analysis of all of the other pumps for all of this time and really have an exact cause scenario, cause profile, a failure profile of what's taken out the, the other pumps and then we've designed around all those deficiencies with our pumps. So looking at the impeller, like we've discussed multiple times before, there's really nothing that can be improved on the impeller. And so we've just gone with a standard unit that's uh, sourced by all the other ones. And then when we move to the body of the pump, we're doing like the OEM, very, very hard anodizing, mirror-like finish. You can see the reflective surface on that, and that is similar to the OEM. We don't have any of the chambers. If you look at the lowest level pumps down here, you can see these are just little strengthening bars, and these get in the way of that fuel. So as the fuel is, the, the pump is spinning, right, inside of there. And uh, so these act as disruptors of the fuel flow. And so we've made ours completely smooth, so we don't have any of that. We have a nice bevel here so that the fuel, as it's being drawn out, uh, we are not impeding it there. And so we're getting the best possible exhaust of the fuel. Everything else on the outside is all the same. We also have a little bleed off hole, just like the others. We have a little uh, stainless steel. This is not a ball bearing, but it's a, just a little detent spot where the bottom of the impeller rides. Uh, and so that is exactly similar to OEM. So we're following those attributes there on that part of the unit. Also the bushing, the largest bushing that is available. This is the, this is the biggest bushing, wear bushing uh, that we could find and the best metallurgy for that. And on our impeller, we went with a, the biggest impeller that we could design. This is 54 grams. So we go 44 on the lowest, and then that middle area, there were 48, stock was 52, and then we made ours 54. We just couldn't go any bigger or heavier. And then at the top, we use carbon. So we are carbon to carbon with our brushes. So again, this would be an all fuel. You could run this in any type of fuel whatsoever. Something I just, that caught my eye is these little, these little marks here. Now these are just balance grooves. So all of these are balanced and there's just a, a machine that spins this. The computer determines where any of the heavy spots are. So opposite of this would have been where the heavy spot was. And so, or this was the heavy spot rather. 
and so they just took a little material away to balance it out they all have that carbon again and at the top we used a uh, the, the the bearing area where the well it's not a bearing but the top where it hits the outlet port is uh, got this little honeycomb attribute and then we also have the Schrader valve just like all the other ones so and then there's really nothing you can innovate here with the shell or the magnets those are all standard similar just like the other ones so our pump is using also uh, the top we used a different composite material that is more resistant to snapping off like what happens on the stock one quite often so we just essentially took all of the things that all of them did right the best of every single one and then we designed every one of those attributes into our pump and we've tested these up to 3,000 hours and this one here has 3,000 hours on it and you can see that there is some wear here into the top it's beveled just a little bit and that would be completely expected uh, with a pump with a 3,000 hour run duty cycle and we haven't had any failures. We've had six pumps running up to 3,000 hours in the test rig, and they've all performed great. We have this pump now in all of our bikes. This pump is in a bunch of the Baja 1000 bikes that, that have been performing exceptionally well. We have yet to see any failures of this pump, and so we confidently are describing this pump as a 3,000 hour pump. Now, results will vary. Uh, I don't actually recommend that you run. Now, whose bike is gonna go 3,000 hours? Uh, the pump itself will and has proven to be able to do that. Uh, we think in a practical uh, use in a bike, this is probably gonna serve you to about 800 hours, maybe even 1,000 hours. And again, uh, it's so few guys who are running bikes that long and there's all kinds of different variables that will impact that however one of the things that we offer on all of our takamoto components is a lifetime guarantee so if you have a failure of any of our pumps let us know we'll figure out if it's a pump or not and if it was the pump itself then we will replace it for you and so we are as confident as we can be about our pumps and um, i really believe that we'll have very few uh, pump failures uh, there probably will be extenuating circumstances if a pump failed, if one of these pumps failed. We know that it wouldn't be etching of the top material. We know that it, it's very unlikely to be the bronze bushing at the bottom. We know that it won't be the impeller because we've just never seen a pump fail because of the impeller. We know we won't have magnet issues because we won't have the wear here on the sides. So we've just designed around, again, some of those failure points. So we're pretty confident in this. We're pretty stoked about this and we're happy to see these go out the door and the feedback so far has been really, really good. It's also really important and a, a, a source of great pride for us to point out that, that our pump is assembled in the United States. It is final assembled here and then it's fully, fully function tested, pressure tested and electrical load tested by American technicians. And so it's the only pump that can make that claim that it's assembled and tested here in the US by US workers and we there are no other pumps that that are like that and we're very honored and proud to be able to make that claim and if you have any questions about anything that we've talked about in this video if you have any of your anecdotal experience with your fuel pump and your fuel system let us know we will be doing later videos on troubleshooting pinpoint troubleshooting fuel system problems we also have our fuel in tank 225 hour cleanable and replaceable in-tank fuel filter that we'll do a video on and so we're going to do more of more of a deeper dive into the fuel system fuel system components troubleshooting and repairs so uh, thanks for watching thanks for 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 your purchases and your patronage we we value it and appreciate it very much uh, moto is life and we're completely dedicated to you and to our products and to the sport uh, like and subscribe go out get some adventure